There was this soul I used to torture back in hell. And like a good masochist, he'd call the shot. Burn me. Freeze me, hurt me. So, I did. And this went on for centuries. Until one day, for some reason, he missed his daily punishment. And when I returned, he was crying. Please, my king, he said. Don't ever forget me again. I promise. I'll be good. It was then that I realized he was so full of self-loathing, void of any self-respect, that no matter the depth of my cruelty, whatever minuscule attention I paid gave meaning to his pointless existence. Why am I telling you this? Because he reminded me of you. You think I've changed? You, a former angel, powerless and pathetic, a disgraced failure with no better way than to spend your days than nipping at my heels for scraps to remind you of a time when you once mattered. When I die, or my body stops functioning, or five minutes later my, my brain still start dying, but in the meantime, in between, or maybe my brain releases a, a flood of DMT, or the psychedelic drug released when we dream, and so <laughs> I dream. I dream bigger than I've ever dreamed before because it's all of it. It's the last dump of DMT all at once and my neurons are firing and I'm seeing this firework display of memories and imagination and my mind's rifling through the memories long and short term and the dreams mix in with the memories and it's a curtain call. One last great dream as my mind empties the fucking missile silos and then... And then I stop. And my brain ceases. And there is nothing left of me. No pain. No memory, no awareness that I that I ever was, that I ever hurt someone, that I ever killed someone. Everything is as it was before me. And all of the other little things that make me up, uh, the microbes and Bacterium and the billion other little things that live on my on my eyelashes and in my hair and in my mouth and on my skin and in in my gut and everywhere else. Well, they just keep on living and eating, and I'm serving a purpose. I'm feeding life, and I'm broken apart. And all the littlest pieces of me are just recycled. And I'm billions of other places. And my atoms are in plants and bugs and animals. And I am like the stars in the night sky. We're there, one moment. And then just scattered around the goddamn cosmos. Who are you carrying all those bricks for, anyway? God. <laughs> Is that it? 
God! Well, I'll tell you. Let me give you a little bit of uh, inside information about God. God likes to watch. He's a prankster. Oh, think about it. He gives man instincts. He gives you this extraordinary gift. And then what does he do, I swear, for his own amusement, his own private cosmic gag reel? He sets the rules in opposition. It's the goof of all time. Look, but don't touch. Touch, but don't taste. Taste, but don't swallow. And while you're jumping from one foot to the next, what is he doing? Well, he's laughing his sick fucking ass off! He's a tight ass! He's a sadist! He's an absentee landlord! Worship that! Never! I'm here on the ground with my nose in it since the whole thing began. I've nurtured every sensation man has been inspired to have. I care about what he wanted, and I never judged him! Why? Because I never rejected him, in spite of all his imperfections. I'm a fan of man! I'm a humanist. Maybe the last humanist. Who in their right mind, Kevin, could possibly deny the 20th century was entirely mine? All of it, Kevin! All of it. Mine. Oh, I'm peeking, Kevin. It's my time now. It's our time. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone, if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. We're human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there is room for everyone. And the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful. But we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women and little children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes, men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men, with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines, you are not cattle, you are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate, only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man. Not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines. The power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful. To make this life a wonderful adventure. 
Then, in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world, a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie. They do not fulfill their promise. They never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now, let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason, a world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! I don't give a fuck right now, kid! I do not want him to spare me because of some fucking peace pact! I want him to acknowledge that his anger is unfucking justified I want him to acknowledge that he who fights by the sword, he fucking dies by it, Tommy! So, they took your boy, did they, eh? They got your boy? And what fucking line am I supposed to have crossed, eh? How many fathers, right? How many sons, yeah, have you cut, killed, murdered, fucking butchered, innocent and guilty, to send straight to fucking hell, didn't you? Just like me! You fucking stand there, you, judging me, stand there and talk to me about crossing some fucking line. If you pull that trigger right, you pull that trigger for a fucking honourable reason, like an honourable man. Not like some fucking civilian that does not understand the wicked way of the world, mate. Let me ask you a question about this brave new world of yours. When you've killed all the bad guys and it's all perfect and just and fair, when you've finally got it exactly the way you want it, what are you going to do with the people like you, the troublemakers? How are you going to protect your glorious revolution from the next one? Hmm? It's not a game. This is a scale model of war. Every war ever fought right here in front of you. Because it's always the same. When you fire that first shot, no matter how right you feel, you have no idea who's going to die. You don't know whose children are going to scream and burn, how many hearts will be broken, how many lives shattered, how much blood will spill until everybody does what they're always going to have to do from the very beginning. Sit down and talk! I just... I just want you to think. <laughs> you know what thinking is? It's just a fancy word for changing your mind. This is not a war. I fought in a bigger war than you will ever know. I did worse things than you could ever imagine. And when I close my eyes, I hear more screams than anyone could ever be able to count. And do you know what I do with all that pain? Shall I tell you where you put it? You hold it tight, till it burns your hand, and you say this, no one else will have to live like this, no one else will have to feel this pain, not on my watch. I don't make mistakes. I'm not just like the rest of you. I'm stronger. I'm smarter. I'm better. I am better. I'm not some weak-kneed fucking crybaby that goes around fucking apologizing all the time. And why the fuck would you want me to be? All my life, people have tried to control me my whole life. Rich people, powerful people have tried to muzzle me, cancel me, keep me impotent and obedient like I'm a fucking puppet. And you know what? It worked. Because I allowed it to work. And guess what? 
If they can control me, then you can bet your ass they can control you. They already do. You just don't realize it. I'm done. I am done apologizing. I am done being persecuted for my strength. You people should be thanking Christ that I am who I am because you need me. You need me to save you. You do. And I am the only one who possibly can. You're not the real hero. I'm the real hero. I'm the real hero. Hello, Ivar. There's no mistaking you. It appears my return is not welcome. You've obviously all made your mind up about me. I cannot blame you for that, huh? So, all right, boys. Who's going to do it then, huh? Who's going to kill me? Oh, I don't mind. Go ahead, please. Oh, what about you, Vitzek? Do you think you're a man now, huh? I dare you. Or put me out of my misery. Then do it. Do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it! Look at these people! They no longer support me, look! Why would they? I am your leader! And I just left. What kind of leader does that, eh? What kind of king abandons his people? What kind of father abandons his sons? So... Well, who wants to be king? Well, you know how this works. If you want to be king, you must kill me. Take it. Huh. You. No. What about you? No, no, anyone who wants to be king! I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I've watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Cape. All those moments will be lost in time, like tears in rain. Time to die. Come. Kindness, kinship, love. I've given up all chance at inner peace. I've made my mind a sunless space. I share my dreams with ghosts. I wake up every day to an equation I wrote 15 years ago from which there's only one conclusion. I'm damned for what I do. My anger, my ego, my unwillingness to yield, my eagerness to fight, they've set me on a path from which there is no escape. I yearn to be a saviour against injustice without contemplating the cost, and by the time I looked down, there was no longer any ground beneath my feet. What is 
What is my sacrifice? I'm condemned to use the tools of my enemy to defeat them. I burn my decency for someone else's future. I burn my life to make a sunrise that I know I'll never see. No, the ego that started this fight will never see a mirror or an audience or, or the light of gratitude. So what do I sacrifice? Everything! You're right. I hate people. Scared of them. Been scared of them practically my whole life. And people I loved. People I trusted. Have done the absolute worst to me. For a long time, that's all I've ever known. So, yeah. I called my group F Society. Because you know what? Fuck society. Society deserves to be hated for everything you said they did and more. Fuck every last one of them for what we've all been through. But then there are some people out there. And it doesn't happen a lot, it's rare. But they refuse to let you hate them. In fact, they care about you in spite of it. And the really special ones. They're relentless at it. Doesn't matter what you do to them. They take it and care about you anyway. They don't abandon you, no matter how many reasons you give them, no matter how much you're practically begging them to leave. And you want to know why? Because they feel something for me that I can't. They love me. And for all the pain I've been through, that heals me. Or maybe not instantly, maybe not for a long time. But it, it heals. And yeah, there are setbacks. We do fucked up things to each other. And we hurt each other and it gets messy. But that's just us. In any world you're in. And yeah, you're right. We're all told we don't stand a chance. And yet... We stand. We break. But we keep going. <laughs> And that is not a flaw. That is what makes us. So no, I won't give up on this world. And if you can't see why, then I speak for everyone when I say, fuck you. You're funny. You're a funny, funny man. <laughs> or should I say boy? You're a boy. You've been coddled and cared for, pampered and hugged. For you, it's always summertime and the living is easy. Daddy's rich and your mama's good looking. You got money in your blood. You are a boy. I'm a man. I have worked for every single thing I have ever received. I have fought and scraped and bled for every inch of ground I walk on. I was the first in my family to go to college. My daughter went to boarding school with the children of kings. I made that happen. You cried yourself to sleep because daddy hurt your own feelings. Because papa banged his secretary because it hurt to have so much money. 
you spoiled, entitled, ungrateful little brat. You have everything handed to you on a silver platter, and you squander it. You've been given the world, and you can't appreciate it because you haven't had to work for anything. So now, you've decided that the one thing that you want is my daughter, my child, mine. What I made, and what I created. Well, you could talk about what a great lady she is to try to get a response from me all you want. But guess what? I am actually, quite literally, <laughs> above your pay grade. Which means that I know that you believe that you're in love with her, as wrong as you may be. You love that she is a door-marked exit. You love that she is your way out. Because if you're with Olivia Pope, you don't have to fulfill your father's dream of being president. If you're with Olivia, you no longer have to be your father's son. An apple never falls far from the tree. You are always going to be Senator Grant's disappointing boy, Fitz. She is always going to be the formidable Olivia Pope. Don't use the person that I made to make you into a man. You're a boy. And sadly, boy, I know everything about you. You disappoint me as a suitor for my daughter's hand. I'm glad you came back. I needed to get my parking validated. So your items were never recovered? No. Earlier, you said that the items weren't that important, yet now you seem very upset that they're gone. Well, I'm a walking paradox, what can I say? Sometimes we need to lose something before we can understand its value. I didn't lose anything. You were the victim of a crime. It's only natural that you would feel violated, and often our feelings of loss connect to how we feel about who we are. All oh, right, so we're back on that, are we? You want to talk about my identity? Well, well yes, because, because you're the devil. You, you told me your names, but you left out a few others. Abaddon, Belial, Prince of Darkness. Someone's been brushing up on their Sunday school. Yes, but before you fell, you were known as Samael, the Lightbringer. I don't go by that name anymore. That was a name that connotated your father's love for you. <laughs> right. Was casting his son into hell also an expression of his love? No, God didn't cast you out of heaven because he was angry with you. How do you presume to know God's intentions? Oh, I don't. I can't. Then maybe stick within the limits of your intellectual capacity. Or maybe my simplicity offers me a different perspective. God cast you out because he needed you to do the most difficult of jobs. It was a gift. Gift? He shunned me. He vilified me. He, he made me a torturer. Can you even begin to fathom what it was like? Eons spent providing a place for dead mortals to punish themselves. I mean, why do they blame me for all of their little failings, as if I'd spent my days sitting on their shoulder, forcing them to commit acts they'd otherwise find repulsive? Oh, oh, the devil made me do it. I never made any one of them do anything. Never! What happened to you is unfair. Unfair? This is unjust. For all eternity, my name will be invoked to represent all their depravity. That is the gift that my father gave me. It was an act of love. How do you know? Because you are his favorite son, Samael. Do not call me that, please. You are his fallen angel. But here's the thing. When angels fall, they also rise. All you have to do is embrace all that you are. I can't. Yes, yes you can. You, you just, just have, have to be open to the process. You don't understand. I can't. But why? Because they've stolen from me! What dreams I had of my mate. Of another being looking into these eyes. Upon this face. And recoiling not. But how could this happen? 
for the monster is not in my face, but in my soul. I once thought that if I was like other men, I would be happy and loved. The malignance is grown, you see, from the outside in. And this shattered visage merely reflects the abomination that is my heart. Oh, my creator, why? Why did you not make me of steel and stone? Why did you allow me to feel? I would rather be the corpse I was than the man I am. Go ahead. Pull the trigger. It would be a blessing. <sighs> I know my fate. Now, for the first time, I feel my emptiness as Adam felt his nakedness. Tonight, at an inn somewhere in this city, stands a giggling child who can put on paper, without actually setting down his billiard cue, casual notes which turn my most considered ones into lifeless scratches. You gave me the desire to serve you which most men do not have, then saw to it that the service was shameful in the ears of the server. You gave me the desire to praise you, which most do not feel, then made me mute. You put into me a perception of the incomparable, which most men never know, then ensured that I would know myself forever mediocre. Why? What is my fault? Until this day, I have pursued virtue with rigor. I have labored long hours to serve my fellow men. I have worked and worked at the talent you allowed me. You know how hard I've worked! Solely that in the end, in the practice of the art which alone makes the world comprehensible to me, I might hear your voice. And now, I do hear it. And it says only one name. Mozart. Spiteful, sniggering, conceited, infantine Mozart, who has never worked one minute to help another man. Shit-talking Mozart! Him! You have chosen to be your sole conduct! And my only reward, my sublime privilege, is to be the sole man alive in this time who shall clearly recognize your incarnation. So be it. From this time, we are enemies, you and I. I'll not accept it from you, do you hear? They say that God is not mocked. I tell you, man is not mocked. I am not mocked. They say the spirit bloweth where it listeth. I tell you, no, it must list to virtue or, or not blow at all. You, you are the enemy. And this I swear to my last breath. I shall block you on earth as far as I am able. What well, use, after all, is man, if not to teach God his lessons. We both had done the math. But Kelly added it all up and well, she knew she had to let me go. I added it up and I knew that I had lost her because I was never going to get off that island. I was going to die there totally alone. I was going to get sick or 
get injured or something. The only choice I had, the only thing I could control, was when and how and where it was going to happen. So uh, I made a rope and I went to the summit to hang myself. I had to test it, you know. <laughs> of course, you know me. And the weight of the log snapped the limb of the tree, so I... I couldn't even kill myself the way I wanted to. I had power over nothing. And that's when this feeling came over me like a warm blanket. I knew, somehow, that I had to stay alive, somehow. I had to keep breathing, even though there was no reason to hope. And all my logic said that I would never see this place again. So that's what I did. I stayed alive. I kept breathing. And one day my logic was proven all wrong because the tide came in and gave me a sail. And now here I am. I'm back in Memphis talking to you. I have ice in my class. And I've lost her all over again. I'm so sad that I don't have Kelly. But I'm so grateful that she was with me on that island. And I know what I have to do now. I've got to keep breathing. Because tomorrow, the sun will rise. Who knows what the tide could bring. I don't have to tell you that things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Well, punks are running wild in the street. And there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do. And there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe. And our food is unfit to eat. And we sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad. Worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything, everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we are living in is getting smaller. And all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster, and my TV, and my steel-belted radials. And I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to riot. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is the first. You've got to get mad. You've got to say it. I'm a human being, goddammit. My life has value. So... I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window. Open it and stick your head out and yell. I'm as mad as hell. 
and I'm not going to take this anymore. I want you to get up right now. Sit up, go to your windows, open them, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! Things have got to change, but first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Then, we'll figure out what to do about the depression and the inflation and the oil crisis. But first, get up out of your chairs, open the window, stick your head out, and yell and say it. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore.